Imagine what it would be like if the 12 days of Christmas was literal, if everything arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and I will translate <clears throat> later if you can't understand what I'm saying, because I'm doing my Irish now. This is my Irish farmer's outfit. I didn't have to wear this, I just thought I would because it's cute. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> dear one, dear Nuller. Thank you very much for your lovely presence of a partridge in a pear tree. We're getting the hang of uh, beating the partridge now, although it was difficult at first to win its confidence. It bit the mother rather badly on the hand, but they're good friends now, and we're keeping the pear tree indoors in a bucket. Thank you again. Yours affectionately, Gavnet Olunasa. Day two. Dear Nula, I cannot tell you how surprised we were to hear from you again so soon and to really receive your lovely present of two turtle doves. You really are too kind. At first the partridge was very jealous and suspicious of the doves and they had a terrible row the night the doves arrived and we had to send for the vet. <laughs> but the birds are okay now and the stitches are due to come out in a week or two. <laughs> the vet's bill was eight pounds but the mother is over her annoyance now and the doves and the partridge are watching the telly from the pear tree as I write. Yours ever, Gavnet. Day three. Dear Nula, we must be foremost in your thoughts. I had only posted my letter when the three French hens arrived. <laughs> then there was another sort out between the hens and the doves, who sided with the partridge and the vet had to be sent for again. <laughs> the mother was raging because the bill was 16 pounds this time, but she's almost cooled down. However, the fact that the bird droppings keep falling down on her head when she's watching the telly doesn't help matters. Thanking you for your kindness, I remain your cabinet. Day four. Dear Nula, you mustn't have received my last letter when you were sending us the four column birds. There was pandemonium in the pear tree last night, and the best bill was 32 pounds. The mother is on sedation, is that right? I know you meant no harm and remain your close friend, Gavnet. Day five. Nuller, your generosity knows no bounds. Five gold rings. When the parcel arrived, I was scared stiff it might be more birds. <laughs> because the smell in the living room is atrocious. <laughs> However, I don't want to seem ungrateful for the beautiful rings, your affectionate friend, Gavnet. Day six. <laughs> Nula, what are you trying to do to us? <laughs> it's not that we don't appreciate your generosity, but the six geese are not alone. <laughs> they nearly murdered the calling birds, and they laid their eggs on top of the bird's head from the bird trip. <laughs> and his bill was 68 pounds in cash. <laughs> My mother is munching 60 grains of valium a day. <laughs> Yourself in the most alarming way. You must keep your feelings to me in check. Gavnet. Day seven. Nula, we are not amused by your little joke. <laughs> seven swans a swimming is a most romantic idea, but not in the bath of a private house. <laughs> we can't use the bathroom now because they've gone completely savage and rush the door every time we try to enter. If things go on this way, the mother and I will smell as bad as the living room carpet. Please lay off, it's not fair. Government. Day eight. Nula, who the hell do you think gave you the right to send eight hefty maids of milk in here to eat us out of house and home? Their cattle are all over the front lawn and have trampled the hell out of the mother's rose beds. The swans 
Romans invaded the living room in a sneak attack, and the ensuing battle between them and the calling birds, turtle doves, French hens, and partridge make the battle of the song seem like one to me wagon. The mother is on a bottle of whiskey a day, as well as 60 grains of volume. I'm very annoyed with you. Goblet. Day nine. Listen here, you lyser. There's enough pandemonium in this place night and day without nine drummers drumming. <laughs> Why the eight flaming mil maids of milk can have beaten my poor old alcoholic mother out of her kitchen. <laughs> and they're gobbling everything in sight. I'm warning you, you're making an enemy of me. Damn it. Day 10. Listen, man, your face. <laughs> I hope you'll be haunted by the strains of ten pipers piping, which you sent to torment us last night. They were aided in their evil work by those maniac drummers, and it wasn't a pleasant sight to look out of the window and see eight hefty maids of milky pole going around with the ensuing punk uproar. My mother has just finished her third bottle of whiskey <laughs> on top of 124 of grains of volume. <laughs> You'll get yours, Goblet of Lunacy. <laughs> Day 11. You have scandalised my mother, you dirty Jezebel. <laughs> it was bad enough to have the eight maids of milk and dance into punk music on the front lawn, but now they've been joined by your friends, the eleven lords of Lepin, and the antics of the whole lot of them that would leave the most decadent days of the Roman Empire look like outlook. I'll get you yet, you old back. <laughs> Day 12. Listen, slurry head. You have ruined our lives. The twelve maids are dancing turned up last night and beat the living daylights out, out of the eight maids of milking because they've been carrying on with the eleven lords leaping. <laughs> Meanwhile, the swans got out of the living room where they've been hiding since the big battle and savaged the hell out of the lords and the maids. <laughs> there were eight ambulances here last night <laughs> and the local civil defence as well. The mother is in a home for the bewildered. <laughs> And I'm sitting here up to my neck in birds' droppings. <laughs> Empty whiskey and valium bottles. Birds' blood and feathers where the flaming cows eat the leaves of the pear tree. I'm a broken man. <laughs> Gabnet Olonese. <laughs> Yes. Oh.